Showtime! The Capital G Show starts right now. What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. So, guys, I've been looking a lot into the OCG recently, and one thing that I've been noticing and I found it really interesting is that Prophecy has been stumbling a bit. It hasn't been absolutely demolishing and destroying the meta quite like I anticipated. And it seems like the deck is going through some growing pains. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that the deck is being sided so hard and play players are even main decking for Prophecy because, you know, obviously they know when you resolve the Spellbook Judgment Day, you know, the, the, the Prophecy player goes so much advantage that you really just can't catch up and they've got, you know, protection for days with the Spellbook of Wisdoms and Fates and they get every card that they basically need. So today I'm going to talk about some of the tech that the Japanese players have been using to fight prophecy and you know uh, maybe if we catch on we can probably do the same thing and stop the deck in its tracks before it really gets you know to that god tier that it was basically seeing once uh, Spellbook Judgment Day was released. So we already know about things like Curse of Darkness and Droll and Lockbird which you know most decks are going to be like side decking some of those cards really heavily when prophecy really get off the ground. But I want to talk about some of the more specific tech that I've been seeing in these archetypes. So, all right, you guys know about uh, the Eradicator Virus and basically how I've said that it's the bane of prophecy. I mean, their deck is basically half spells. So, obviously, you activate it using, you know, a big dark target, cost spells, and then you just, like, basically win. You know, they can't summon High Priestess unless they have a bunch of spell books in their hand. Even when they have back row set because they resolve, like, a spell book, Judgment Day, and they've got tons and tons of spells. You know they're all spells anyway. The deck doesn't play any good traps. There's stuff for protection, things like Spell Book of Wisdom, you know, Spell Book of Fate, their protection cards. You know, it even kills their field spell, which, I mean, they can get another monster, but they can't really do anything if they don't have any spells to get the deck rolling. So what a lot of Verse players have been doing is, They've been teching copies of E-Virus into their decks. And obviously, you know, like, Ophelion's already amazing against Prophecy because they can't special summon the, uh, you know, the High Priestess of Prophecy as long as it has a material uh, attached to it. And then you can just detach. You can get your Pandemic Virus and you can protect yourself uh, from things like Dark Hole and whatnot. So, you know, your opponent can't summon Trag. They can't summon High Priestess already. And then you have protection from Dark Hole. But what players are doing is they'll simply E-Virus their Ophelion away, get rid of all your spells, and they've also been teching in copies of Exceed Reborn so that they can simply revive their Ophelion and go back to attacking, you know, so that they can basically win in a couple turns. And honestly, uh, the Prophecy player is just at a loss because, like, it's not really much you can do. You're already locked down from using your best monsters by Ophelion's inherent ability. And then when you just add insult to injury with your E-Virus, it's like, well, shit, can't do anything. Uh, I've also seen this, the Suppressor Dragons or Elemental Dragons that we call them. Uh, they've been doing the same exact thing. I've seen some of these decks even main decking three copies to fight Prophecy of E-Virus, and it makes perfect sense. Like, obviously, you have Red Eyes Metal, Darkness Dragon, you know, that being one of the uh, key cards in the deck as it just revives and beats over like shit. You have Big Eye, which <laughs> I'm convinced that this deck is going to get Big Eye banned, but <laughs> that is neither here nor there. Uh, Big Eye obviously is another good target, and then you have Gores. You know, if you have the if you have the E virus in your hand, your opponent you know tries to get in there with a poke, drop Gores. Next turn, simply set your E virus, E virus them, and win. And you know, Red Eyes is probably something where it's like a little risk versus reward because like you don't want to just give your Red Eyes up all willy nilly. But you have the fact that you know Sarko and Tempest can search Red Eyes. Redux can revive it from the graveyard, so, you know, with the ability to revive it with Monster Reborn or Redux, I mean, it's not really that big of a deal. Another thing that uh, Elemental Dragon players have been doing is, they'll make Red Dragon Archfiend, I mean, because they understand that when you E-Virus Prophecy, you just win. So, what they'll do is, you know, all the... All these suppressor dragons are level seven, so when they have cards like Effect Veiler that they know aren't particularly useful against Prophecy, they'll just say, "Okay, special summon this E Dragon, or special summon the uh, yeah the E Dragon. Normal summon my Effect Veiler, make Red Eyes or make Red Dragon Archfiend E Virus for game. I mean, <laughs> so it's actually pretty cool. Like they're playing a really really obscure card in Red Dragon Archfiend that hasn't been good in how long." Just for this simple reason of I can E-Virus that motherfucker. And then maybe later I can reborn it with Red Eyes or I can remove it to summon a Suppressor Dragon or something like that.
Mermen are quite interesting. A lot of these players have taken a completely different route. What they're doing is they're playing anti-spell fragrance. And this makes perfect sense. So, you know, obviously that seems like a temporary solution to a permanent problem. But no, it, it, it permanently solves the problem as in, you know, the prophecy player has to set all those spell books. I mean, prophecy is a deck where they want to use like three spell books minimum in a turn a lot of times. If they have spell book judgment day, they're probably looking to use like, I don't know, anywhere the five plus the... Uh, potential of using the effect of the Grand Tower. But what happens is when they have to set all those spell books, then, you know, you have three copies of Marksman. You just rack up. It's like just go to town on them. You know, start popping things with Marksman. And what's even better is since you know they're not playing any decent traps, it's like their monsters don't really have a lot of ability. They won't be able to use their spell book of fate you know, to defend themselves as their graveyard isn't loaded correctly. So it's like, just go in and try and OTK them. It's like, screw it, you know. They don't play good defense. If they have Trag, well, they got Trag. But for my money, if they have to set a bunch of cards, and I know that they're all spells, I'm going ham. Like, YOLO all fucking day. I'm trying to OTK with, with Mermill and Lanian. So that's the funny, that's the interesting thing that that deck has been doing. They've been going anti-spell fragrance to make you, basically to like slow you down to a screeching halt. And then Fire Fist. Now, here's one thing that's actually really odd because it's a fire deck, but they've been playing E-Virus also, and it's like, well, what targets do they have? And I really had to, like, search on this one. What they do is, you know, the deck, it's, it's weird because it's one of the only uh, decks outside of, like, Samurai that is a XC threat and a Synchro threat. So what they summon is Sirius the Blue Dog Star, and you know I'll you can look the card up if you don't know it. It's a 2400 dark uh, synchro monster. But here's the interest, here's the interesting thing. He's a Beast Warrior, so he's 2400 when he comes out. But if you have a Fire Formation card like a Tencent or you know like a Tenki or something, he's 2500. That means you can E Virus him, and since you can use something like Tencent to make him turn one. You can basically just make him relatively easy, set your E-Virus, say Prophecy Player go, E-Virus him, and then your opponent just sits there salty as shit. Next turn, maybe you top deck like a bear or a gorilla and start rolling, and it's just basically over. So, you know, I think that uh, this is quite interesting because, you know, this deck that everybody thought might terrorize the entire card game is kind of like uh it's been hindered a little bit by all the tech that people have been seeing and again this doesn't even take into consideration people who side deck you know curses of darkness and you know draw and lock which is probably going to be you know a eight dollar card soon enough so tell me what you guys think if you have any other tech that maybe i missed out on just go ahead and leave that in the comment section thank you for watching and i'll talk to you later subscribing makes life happy